Big news here on CBS Sports HQ. Major League Baseball owners voting unanimously to impose a lockout. The owners and players failed to come to an agreement on a new CBA. It marks the first work stoppage since the 1994-95 strike. During the lockout, free agency and trades are not allowed, and players have no access to team facilities. A few of the sticking points, players want reduced service time for free agency. They want the arbitration process to begin after two seasons instead of three. Players have also asked for the luxury tax threshold to be raised to $240 million. It was $210 million last season. Now, Major League Baseball made proposals that included several concessions. The elimination of the current qualifying offer system, which would remove draft pick compensation attached to any free agent. The addition of the universal DH, which would add jobs. And the expansion of the postseason was also discussed. But for now, the talks have been tabled. Welcome in former MLB Executive of the Year and CBS Sports Baseball Insider Jim Bowden. Jim, Major League Baseball owners voting unanimously to impose a lockout. What's your reaction? What more can you tell us? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, they haven't made any progress since last May on the big economic core issues of the collective bargaining agreement. And you just touched on some of the big issues. But the union wants free agency to be reduced from six to five years. They've given many different proposals uh, that it would stay at six years for three or four years and then by year six it goes to five years there's been a proposal out there that at age 29 and a half or 30 and a half they also can become a free agent uh, that's something the clubs don't want to give up the clubs right now have control of the players for six years you mentioned arbitration they want the younger players to get paid earlier they want to try to find a way to get around the manipulation of the Super 2 player. That's something that they're working on. The other things you touched on, you know, trying to reduce revenue sharing, that would really hurt the smaller market teams. Um, they also want to, to, to raise the roof on the threshold of the tax uh, so that teams like the Yankees and Red Sox and Phillies uh, are able to spend more money, which again, hurts the smaller market teams. And so the core values that the union's trying to get back here to improve the system are just non-starters for baseball. That being said, there are some positive things that probably they're gonna easily agree upon. Expanded playoffs, although the clubs wanted 14 teams, the players have come back and offered 12. Both sides want the universal DH, that's gonna happen. Both sides want the minimum to increase, but they're arguing about how much but the clubs are willing to increase the minimum, but not as much as the players want. So there's so many issues here, but the dialogue has not gone well. And there's like zero progress in terms of those. And so the clubs made the decision um, to lock out the players, uh, which clearly means no more trades, no more signings. Players can no longer work at the facilities. So obviously the game right now is uh, being put on pause. Jim, what are the options? What's next at this point? Well, the, the next thing you do is you, you keep going to the negotiating table. And this time of year for baseball, it's, it's, it's something you can overcome because you really have four months until opening day. If you can continue to negotiate in December and hope to make progress, if you got a deal done by January 1st and you had the month of January to do the trades and free agents, baseball wouldn't lose a thing. The problem comes in if you don't make any progress in, De in December and in January and you start heading into February. Now, all of a sudden, if you put spring training in jeopardy, opening day in jeopardy. And as you mentioned, the last time we had a situation like this was 1994. Uh, we, baseball doesn't want to get into that. Uh, there are options, though. Uh, there's an option where they could extend the present CBA for one more year and continue to negotiate. Uh, that's an option that both both sides could look at. Um, but I think the clubs really want to lock something in and the players certainly want to make progress because they've lost the last two CBAs. So right now, you know, there's a pause in the action and, you know, there's no sense of urgency. The players don't feel any sense of urgency here and the clubs don't. You know, uh, one of the agents, Scott Boris, came out and said, I don't care when my players get paid, if they get paid before the lockout or if they get paid after the lockout. All I care about is that they get paid before the first pitch is made. So neither side feeling a sense of urgency right now, so the game goes on hold. Jim, what's your message to fans? How should they view this situation right now? 
I mean, all I can say to fans is enjoy the the moves that your teams have made. Um, be disappointed if your teams haven't made moves. But understand at this point, no games have been missed. At this point, don't cancel your spring training plans. Uh, they, ha- they haven't been canceled yet. There haven't been any games missed. And this is something that has to be negotiated. The one thing I'll say to fans for the positive light is both sides know we, we can't have a situation where games are missed. The game won't be able to withstand that. So hopefully the grown-ups will continue to be um, at the negotiating table trying to get something done. But I will say this. Ever since Bruce Meyer has come on board the Players Union, who's their lead lawyer under Tony Clark, he is hard-nosed. And this is a Donald Fear, Marvin Miller type of leader. And they're going to do everything they can to to try to get back some of the things they've lost over the last two CBAs. Jim, we're sitting here. It's the first week of December. At what point do we get concerned where games could get canceled, where we have another situation where games are in jeopardy of being played, where we don't get to have a full Major League season? At what point do you get concerned? I get concerned when it gets to February and we don't have a deal. I mean, that, that's, that's for me. It. I, I'm not really worried if they, if they can sign or trade players in December. I prefer them to at least to be able to do it in January. But if you get to February and there's no deal, uh, then my knees will start to shake and the sweat will start to come from my pores because that's, that's nervous time. Not that you still couldn't get ready. Uh, if you get to February and you could have the signings and the free agents in February, play games in, in March and go. But if you don't have a deal two months from now, then I'm going to worry. In the meantime, I'm going to hope both sides continue to work and try to find a deal. I just am concerned that basically there's no traction or no progress or no compromise really on the biggest issue. The clubs have basically looked at it and said, hey, we got to this point. We don't want to give it up. And I understand that viewpoint. At the same time, the game has issues, and we can't ignore the issues. We have teams that are tanking. We have teams that are not trying to win. We have teams that want to pick at the top of the draft. We, we have to have some kind of lottery system and fix it. So the game isn't perfect. Although there's enough money to go around, it's the system's a little bit broken. We have young players that are superstars that aren't getting paid zero to three, and we have the older players that are no longer getting paid anymore because teams are getting smarter than they were before. So... You also have to fix the problems, and I think it's not just about negotiating um, you know, a CBA and what's best for the owners and what's best for the players. I think both sides have to understand they have to do a deal that's best for the game as an industry and improve the, the competition and get rid of tanking. Jim, as a former executive, do you view this lockout as part of the process? Yeah, I do. I mean, look, as you know, I was a GM in 94 and 95. Uh, my teams were in first place both years. And that our chances of winning world championships were affected because of work stoppages. And it's not great. And I watched the damage that was done to the sport. And it took years for the sport to bounce back. So I'm definitely concerned about what will happen if we miss games. I'm not concerned on December 1st if they don't have a deal yet. Because, again, free agency and trades can wait a month. You can still sit there in your boardroom if you're running a club and have the plan of who you're going to continue to chase in free agency and what trades you want to work on. And although you can't make any trades or free agents, you can set those things up. You can line up the things you want to do. So, you know, from a GM's perspective, you look at this and you say, okay, we can still be working and, and getting our things done. And let's just hope that everyone spends most of the time figuring out a way to get a labor agreement that everyone's going to embrace. And again, during the lockout, free agency, trades not allowed. Uh, Players have no access to team facilities. MLB owners voting unanimously to institute a lockout. Jim Bowden, bring it down for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Jim, thank you. Thank you. And this marks the ninth work stoppage in Major League Baseball history and the first since the 1994-95 strike. As we mentioned, during that stoppage, more than 900 games were canceled. But this work stoppage could be like many others before it, where no games were canceled.